It's always good to get a break. And for our family, our preferred way is with our camper. We're getting ready to go take a little break before the growing season gets started. As soon as we get back, we'll have chicks arriving and it'll be time to get the garden planted. It's been over a year since we've had the opportunity to use our camper. And so we've got a few projects to do before we can get on the road, as usual. We've had this camper for a few years and we really like it. It's a unique style of pop-up camper with two folding upper shells and a slide on the front and rear. It's one of the few that you can fit in a standard size garage door. Since it's been sitting for a while, it was time for a deep clean, which was a project that my wife took on. We haven't pulled the camper or any trailer with brakes since we got this car, so I don't have a brake controller set up. That's something I need to set up before we pull the camper. There should be a pigtail under the dash with the four wires and it does have the seven prong plug on the back. Based on what I'm reading in the manual, I believe right up under here is where our wiring harness is. I think I can just pull this trim up. It's just snapped onto clips in here. Clips that are supposed to just snap up, but there we go. So let's see. It's like this guy right here. Get that electrical tape off of there. I think that's what we're looking for. That's definitely what we're looking for. Four. Well, it should be four. Yeah, there's a fourth one up under there. The wires are back here, and I can't tell if they're taped or if that's the end of them. I'm going to go ahead and pull these three nylon nuts off. There we go. That gets out of the way easily. Doesn't look like there's any more. That's the end of our wiring. It says four blunt cut wires. Let's see what we got. There's a blue, a white, a black, and a red. I'm gonna go ahead and strip these wires and install my crimp connectors on this end of the harness outside of the vehicle. I'll go ahead and strip the ends on the vehicle side. I like using these ratcheting crimpers because you can go ahead and get your tool lined up and it'll hold it in place for you. You don't have to worry about dropping it. It's locked in there now. And then I can go ahead and slide, just slide it over your wire. And that should be crimped down good. We're all locked and loaded. It, I'll put a link to these crimpers in the description if anybody cares. Blue is, is brakes the feet to the brakes on both harnesses. Black on the controller harness is power, which is this red and blue one on the factory harness. There we go. <clears throat> we'll get this routed up and our plug should sit right about there, which there's enough, enough tail length there that shouldn't be any issue. I got two mounting holes right here. One, there's already a screw in the dash. And then this is just an open hole, through hole. But I can put a little bolt in there. I think this bracket will sit right in there. The holes should line up nice. Just right up in there. That one tightened up first. Plug it in to the back. Slide the controller in there, snap it up into place. Now we're all set. Quick garden update for our subscribers that have been following along on the garden project. We got our chickens moved out here. We're not gonna be doing much out here for the next couple of weeks, so we're just letting them do their work, kinda till stuff up. So our bread controller's all set. I got it plugged in, tested it, the next project that we have to tackle, which is also specific to getting it set up to tow with this vehicle, is setting up our weight distribution hitch. It makes the ride significantly better. Certain vehicles do have a higher tongue weight rating with a weight distribution hitch. That one started. I think I need to loosen that lower bolt. 
and that lets us slide these in freely. Now I'm going to take my starting measurement so I know where we're at before we put any weight on this. At 35 on the back wheel, 33 on the front wheel. So now we're set on the hitch side. Now we need to hitch it back up and attach our spring bars. Now these brackets I've already got installed on the trailer. I did this a couple years ago when we first got this. But I'm going to go with what seems like it fits right, which is four from the end. We'll tighten that one on. Do that on both sides and see what happens. Lower the jack until the weight is completely on the vehicle. It's kind of hard because I'm measuring off of gravel, so if I set it on top of that rock first, I set But that's 34 and a half. And we're basically 32 and a half, 32 and three quarters at the front. So that's where we want to be. Four chain links from the end. And that's just how you set it up every time. Now, the setup is done. And every time I hitch it up, I just have to remember that four chain links from the end, and that's the only, the only piece I have to remember. Our next project is to get the awning installed back on the camper. I removed it at our last house in order to make it easier to get in the garage. It will fit in an 8x7 garage door, but just by a couple of inches. By removing the awning, it gave us about three or four more inches of clearance width-wise, and that made a big difference. Now we don't have to deal with those 8-foot wide garage doors anymore. Everything here is at least 9-foot wide, so it's not a big deal to just leave the awning on. So I'm going to go ahead and get it permanently installed back on the camper. Go ahead and run a bead of caulking along the top, which is just how it was when I took it off. Really the purpose of this is just to keep any water from coming down in between the awning and the camper when it's raining. So I'm not going to be super particular about this. Where I'm going to be particular is around the screw holes. Those are through holes into the framing, which is wood framing, and we don't want water inside the wall. There's three on each end. There's these two angle iron pieces on either end, and the screws are just to keep it against the camper, but the weight is bearing down on these angles. I've got it lined up at least the best I can with those screw holes. So now I'm gonna go ahead and slide it down. Try not to get the caulking everywhere. There we go. That's hooked on that angle iron. Then we're on this side. And I do have to open this a little bit so I can get to those screw holes. Yeah, I'm just a little bit off. I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can get one of these screws on this end lined up with the hole. Usually once you get one lined up, I mean these were drilled and screwed in at the factory, right? So once you can get one lined up, you're usually in pretty good shape. Now I do have to open up the awning just a little bit more to be able to get to these inner screws. Then I've got to sneak down under the awning to get them screwed in. Now that I got those one-time projects knocked out, all that's left is just the normal maintenance before getting on the road. These have bearing buddies, so they just have this dust cap on top. Just a regular pick. They pop right out. I like to put a couple of shots of grease in the wheel bearings, at least annually or if we're gonna go on a long trip and it's gonna get a lot of miles, I'll do it more frequently. Two or three pumps like that. Don't need to go crazy. There we go, here, click into place. Then we'll go ahead and check the tire pressure. And of course, my valve stem is at the very top. So we've got about 35 PSI, and according to my sticker, that's so conveniently located right here, we need 50.
And right on 50. So now all I've got left is to just load the thing up and hit the road. Made it to the beach. <laughs> we made it back, we had a great time at the beach. Now it's time to get this unloaded and get on to the rest of our projects. The chicks are here and they're all doing great. I want to give a channel update on what projects we have coming up. We've got a busy month ahead with the new chicks here. We've got a little bit more work to do in getting the garden set up so that we can get that planted. We've also been working on getting this old garage behind me set up to be a place for a future milk cow with a stall and a stanchion. And then we'll be back here in the shop. We've got some fabrication work to do, and then we'll be back to the truck project. Speaking of the truck project, I had a lot of new subscribers join the channel with that video, so welcome to all of you. Thanks so much for joining. So we've got a lot going on in the coming months and a lot of different types of projects. I'm gonna to try to continue to post a new video every Saturday. So I hope to see you back here then. Thanks for watching.